Good morning, family friends. We are heading out on a road trip. It's a little early. We are doing our very first adult-only vacation in a very long time. I can't remember the last time we did something like this. I did my solo trip in March of last year, but I haven't been, been away with Frank for a long, long time. So looking forward to it. We are heading to Music City. We're heading to Bristol, Tennessee. Uh, no, we're not heading to Bristol. He's got, what is it that you've got on? NASCAR. Is that what? He's got NASCAR on his brain. We're actually heading to Music City. So we're heading to Nashville. So come along for some fun. headed on vacation. Throw them in the back on to our destination. Don't forget your toothbrush and you don't need no makeup. Unless you want it, baby, that's fine with me. Headed on a road trip, let's go, let's go Washing every town we dip on the past You're in charge of the tunes, just skip the ones that make the time just fly on by back for a few days from our trip to Nashville we've never been so we decided that our trip to Nashville was going to be very important to us because I came off a very very busy maple syrup season I actually calculated out uh, how many liters of sap I boiled off and I boiled off in about 14 days what I did in six weeks last year uh, our season was very fast this year it wasn't any lighter as far as what we received, but it was very, very busy. We had a lot of sap and, uh, and you know, what most people don't realize is that when you have warmer days on sap season, it really takes a toll on the validity of your sap, uh, which means that, you know, three or four days in a warm day on warm days will destroy your sap. And it, once it starts to cloud up, it's garbage. You, you can't boil it. We boiled off uh, 6,000 liters of sap in a very, very short period of time. So I was working day and night. I actually worked, we were leaving on Thursday morning around 7 o'clock was when we all got together at my brother-in-law's 7 a.m. And I was literally bottling 
at two o'clock in the morning. <laughs> and, you know, because I just, I didn't want to lose what I had and I had spent a lot of time getting it prepped and I thought I could get it done, but you just don't realize how much time it takes from the time you actually start your boil to the time you're actually bottling. So two o'clock in the morning, I finished Wednesday. On Thursday morning, I finished early and then we were up and at We've never been to Tennessee. We've never experienced Tennessee. Now we've been to Disney a lot. He's neglecting to share. It was Nashville. Nashville. Sorry, yeah. Too, so we were so. at the country music <laughs> yeah. capital of the world. Yeah. And, you know, going back to my Disney uh, snippet there, we, we've done Disney on, uh, you know, 10 occasions over our 20 years, uh, 25 years of having children. Uh, that seems to be our go-to place, and we all enjoy it, and uh, and it's busy. It's, it's. I mean, anybody that goes to Disney knows how busy it is, but I have never experienced anything like Nashville, Tennessee. Like, it was uncomfortably busy. We're going to talk a little bit about our trip in Nashville, and we're going to talk a little bit about the do's and don'ts, so let's go and do some of that right now. Like Frank was saying, the, the importance of having rest time after a very heavy season, a busy, busy go-go. We as attendant, we as a couple and as a family have a tendency to kind of go hard and hustle, hustle. And um, periodically, we like to take a little break every now and again. So this trip was a, a very last minute, spontaneous thing for us to do. Um, we hopped on board my, other, my brother's RV and we did a road trip and it was lovely because interestingly enough, we have always traveled in, in trailers, things like that, but um, we don't do, we've never traveled. We were passengers this time. We were passengers, it was nice. Mm -hmm. It was a nice trip. Um, it's, it's not typical for us. He's usually the one in the driver's seat. It was difficult for you to be a passenger, wasn't no, it? No, it was nice. It, it was, was very nice. relaxing. It was nice. Mm -hmm. We determined while we were down there a couple of things that we should not have done and it cost us. It cost us almost an evening. So yeah, we're going to share those with you. So the first thing that, um, that I learned that you should not do when you're in Nashville, especially on Broadway, Broadway is the really only on Broadway. Yeah, that's everywhere else. Everything was fine. El everywhere else was fine, um, but we had left our hotel first thing in the morning, and with the intention of spending most of the day out doing museums, doing the hop on, hop off. The intention was to, to kind of get a lay of the land, kind of take a, take a look because the entire party that we were with had never been. It was uh, a first trip for everybody. We're so all we're. <laughs> You're all Nashville virgins. Um, so we, we didn't really know what to expect. So we all uh, kind of had the intentions that we were going to spend the entire day and then uh, well into the evening likely. And so I decided to pack a bag. I took snacks, I took water, I took a change or a, a sweater for both Frank and I. And um, so I, of course, carried my knapsack with me. Which is very Disney-esque. It was very, like, right? Yeah. That's my experience That's with travel. That's what we do, because you have kids, you yeah. travel with snacks. I just, it didn't even occur to me. you pay $17 me. for a chocolate bar. Yeah, bar hopping is not something that I'm comfortable with or, or familiar with at all. So yeah. I ended up finding myself being rejected from all the bars. Well, there was a couple of that allowed us to go in, but they searched us and whatever. They just refused entry. So unfortunately, we ended up having to call our evening early because it, um, the rest of the party ended up going in and enjoying themselves. So we had to go back to the hotel. We were attention, our intention was to go back to the hotel, drop the bag, and um, head back into the into the town because we were staying closer to the airport versus downtown. Yeah. So, and then Frank's going to talk about that it's later not on. Far, yeah, but with regards to the actual Ubers and Lyfts and things like that, we'll talk about that in a minute. Um, yeah, that cost us a, that cost us an evening of fun, but that was okay. We uh, we decided the next day, no backpacks, nothing like that. We just enjoyed, and that's when we did the hop on hop off. What were we doing in the sixties with NASA? Going to the moon? Yeah, absolutely. We had to do. Yeah, in the hop on hop off. You know, it's funny because when you when you go on. And your again your versions to the area, you rely heavily on Google. Like I mean, you're, you're going to Google, you know, your top ten things. And those, one of the things that we have to do, which everybody said was fantastic, was the hop on, hop off tour bus. And just to give you a quick uh, fifteen seconder, it's a bus, open air. It doesn't have an open top. Um, but it's got open air sides and it would house about 60, 70 people and it'll drive around and it'll drive around to, uh, it's, it's a two hour tour. And you can get off the bus. There's 13 stops 
The main pickup point is down at the Broadway uh, location where all the honky tonks are and then off they go. So here's my advice. Do the hop on hop off tour, do that. What you don't wanna do is what we did, which is stay on it, get off it and get off it. And there's literally of the hop on hop off buses, there is probably one every 15 minutes, one every 15 minutes, which means that there's probably between, I'd say seven to 10 buses. It's a fairly sizable locate, like fairly sizable route, 13 different stops. There's typically lots of room to get on and off the bus, get off the bus. Because what we found was there so there was so many really nice stops that we didn't get on, get off and spend the time, even if it was 15, 20 minutes, to get off and enjoy. It's that analogy of yeah. we'll come back later and enjoy this, but you just never do go back. And the problem was, the problem was, was once we once we did the the full tour, which was what we did, we just stayed on the bus and did the full the full two hour tour. Um, I think we got off on one stop. Um, we did, yeah, because we all marathon. had to go to the <laughs> And um, that was the issue, right? The intention was, oh, we'll go back here, we'll go back here, we'll hit this spot, we'll hit this spot. But the reality of it was, was, you was you wouldn't because it's then you'd have to, you'd have to Uber, Uber it yeah. back there, and you couldn't do it. and you couldn't. And the the surprisingly, the hop on hop off shuttle, shuttle, the last one was four at four p.m. So really, you're not losing your evening; you're just losing most of the, your your day yeah. by going around during the day. So that's kind of what we we felt was a really big um, feature was just being able to to go off each stop and and enjoy what each stop had. And you could spend 15 minutes at one, or you could spend 30 minutes yeah. at it. You wouldn't need much more time than that, unless of course you were going into the Parthenon, which was a little bit more involved. Um, some of the museum but things, I mean, but you didn't have to spend no, a lot of you time. Didn't have you could to. have done that one easily in 30 minutes. Yes, oh, absolutely. <clears> you could have been in and out of there in 30. And a lot of the spots like Music Row, we could have got off there and even walked to see some of the um, the really popular uh, studio, country music stars, studio studios, yeah, all of those kind of yeah. things. Yeah, and and we didn't do that. We drove by and then we regretted it the next day and even the day after because we just knew we weren't going to get back to it. And over two hundred of his hit songs, as well as a Christmas album in the middle of, of July. Over thirty three thousand songs have been recorded that day. A thousand of them have gone on to become hits. RCA Victor Recording Studios or Studio A. That's still used as a studio to this day. Known as the Abbey Road of Nashville. There's so many famous faces are recorded there, such as Paul McCartney, Dolly Parton, Carrie Underwood, Roy Acuff, and Ben Folds, and Johnny Cash. And here to our left, that is Starstruck. Starstruck used to be on the Reba McIntyre until 2015 when she lost it to her ex-husband in a divorce. Singing the Aubrey. Many artists were getting tired of having to do all that. By the mid 50s, though, we started being more officially recognized as Music City, thanks to the Grand Ole Opry and the Quonset Hut, which we'll see later. That drew in a lot of new artists and people from the recording studio industry who would come in here and buy up these homes and turn them into their own recording studios. So the zoning board of Nashville told everybody here they could alter the inside of their recording studio homes whenever they wanted to, but not the outside. They didn't want to lose any of that historic neighborhood charm, but unfortunately, over the years, the almighty dollar has slowly won. And here to our left across the street, this used to be a church up until 1996. Now is one of the most respected studios on Music Row, ladies and gentlemen, that is Ocean Way, Nashville. Ocean Way is so highly respected because of the very unique church acoustics on the inside that provide the artist there with this very rich, unique, and bold sound. Because when you walk through those front doors, you'll find that it's nothing more than an open-air church cathedral with a lot of lighting, recording equipment, and microphones in there. And many famous artists have recorded at Ocean Way Nashville, folks, including Beyonce, Beck, Billy Ray Cyrus, John Fogarty, Train, Three Doors Down, No Doubt, The Rack On Tours, Jack White, Ricky Skaggs, Gwen Stefani, and Marty Stewart. And it's also where they recorded part of the soundtrack for one of the greatest movies ever made. Oh brother, where art thou? And 
probably we probably won't go back to Tennessee for that reason. Like we're going back to Tennessee for a homesteading conference next month, but we're not going to spend any time in Nashville because oh my god, it's it's, <laughs> it's I a mean, lot. I if, think I would go back. I think I definitely would go back. Well, you so. better call one of your girlfriends because oh. I'm not going with you. Who's coming? <laughs> so, anyways, so that was that was pretty well what I what my expectation was for the hop on hop off. My advice is to get off, take the time, get on at Broadway, and get off on your stops. Like, and and actually, it's funny because the the tour guide that we had, who is the bus driver, they all kind of have the same spiel, but but some of them have certain expectations of what you may like and and when he said you know you guys might want to get off here and spend some time and walk around we really should have taken that to heart because yeah. it really was his they're a treasure trove of knowledge yeah, they know what they're looking at he and what knew they're seeing, yeah. by his audience behind him that this might be a spot but we didn't do it we just stayed yeah. on because we should have gotten off so my advice to you is get off assembly line on building the body of the 1912 marathon and this big long bar would run off a big steam engine and they would attach straps leather straps would be attached onto the bar and it would go down to the machine and then they would pull a clutch down here and it would fire the machine so all these machines that you see here would all run off of this bar one bar would run the entire assembly line and this this whole assembly line was to just put together this that's all it was for it was the entire woodworking of the body of that car yeah, right there so this would be a strap that would come off of there would come down to here and as this is turning, as this is continuously turning, the leather strap would get pulled with a tight clutch of some sort and tighten the strap onto this machine that would literally run that machine. <laughs> All the other machines would be doing nothing, but if it was, if this one was engaged by tightening the strap, you'll see the straps down here on these ones. It's just incredible. How these guys ran this stuff. There couldn't be any safety. Some of the straps are still on here. So if they wanted this machine to run, this strap would be spinning. So it would be spinning up top, and there would be a lever of some sort, and the lever would be a tightening belt. And it would literally tighten this strap up against this machine, and it would fire this tool. This tool would run. <laughs> What's this? That is the lathe. That, this would be the, the biggest, most complex machine makes the smallest of parts. That's mm -hmm. what this is for. It's a lathe that would make small, little, tiny parts. <clears throat> Absolutely. That's probably for making the hubs. Yeah, if you can imagine. Multiple collets. Oh, 
I'll drive you safely to the end. I will love you longer than a lifetime, oh yes. And these memories last forever in my head. I know these moments are the best, it's unsaid. Got a photo album open on the bed. I will love you longer than a lifetime, oh yes. And these memories last forever in my head. You make it hard to focus on the road that's ahead. God, none of the lights on us. You can pack your bags, cause we're headed on vacation. Throw them in the back, on to our destination. And don't forget you too. I know you, so you don't need no makeup unless you want it, baby. That's fine with me. Headed on a road trip. Let's go, let's go. Watching every town we dip on the I'm in charge of All right, so the third thing is the Uber and Lyft system. So we opted to stay at the airport, which was about a 20 minute, uh, not quite 20 minutes, maybe 10 minutes, maybe 10 or 15 minutes from the Broadway downtown core. Yeah. So that little hike required us to take an Uber and a Lyft into town each day, which the, the morning Uber and the morning Lyft were, were very reasonable and when shared among our party, it was a, a very reasonable cost. Yeah, like 12, 15 dollars. So the difference of staying at a, a less expensive hotel closer to the airport versus in the downtown totally made sense until the evening hours and that's when we noticed a big difference um, the same cost so it was um, over uber over lyft it didn't really i think that you're either you're good with either one um, but definitely it becomes extremely expensive or far more expensive during peak times. So I don't know if you can, and we were there when the Luke Holmes concert was going on and it was just letting out, which it was a crazy busy sea of people for miles of walking over the pedestrian bridge over the Cumberland River, the, uh, the show let out. and. That was kind of a funny thing because I had asked Frank to come up on this pedestrian bridge so we could take a, a, a shot of the city at that time. So it was a mistake. Um, do not go on that pedestrian bridge when a concert's letting out. 70,000 people. It was walking. a lot of people and that was a mistake. That was rookie number, mistake number five, 10, 15, whatever. Um, but definitely try to arrange your, your lifts and your Ubers during off peak hours. in the afternoon it's all peak it's peak until three o'clock in the morning when you're there i mean anybody that uses lyft and uber knows that your peak times are going to be anything after dinner so what what the uber guys because i talked to them all or the lyft guys was said just walk i mean you can't walk back to your hotel that's for sure but walk for five minutes he said that five minute walk will save you 50 percent of the cost so instead of paying 55 dollars, you'll pay 20 dollars or 25 dollars mm -hmm. and that way because they don't have to drive in the, into the Broadway area, into the main honky-tonk area to pick us up. And the other thing too is, is attaching that little wait time. So you can get a lift right away. You can get one within a minute because they're everywhere. Uh, I think the one guy told me that there's around 4,000 Uber and Lyft drivers in the Tennessee, Nashville, Tennessee area every day. He said, so there's going to be somebody there to pick you up. But if you hit the save icon to wait 
10 minutes, 15 minutes, again, it'll knock 30, 40% off. So anyways, let's, let's move on to the next topic. Topic number four, food. We had um, so many different availabilities. This is a honky tonk area. This is all bars. Our, our food. But at the end of the day, Nashville is not just known for its country music, it's known for its bar food. And the bar food is... Culinary, there's a lot. Yeah, it's a lot different than it is here. Like it's a very, it's a, it's a culinary experience. They try to, they want you to come back to their facility. They, they, they know that 70 or 80% of all the patrons that are in there that day are tourists. Mm -hmm. And the only way that they're gonna get a tourist back in the door is to give them a good experience. Mm -hmm. So a good experience, either personality from the service or the food. But the food options were just fantastic. It's not cheap, but there was one, <laughs> one place that we specifically, and everybody talked about it, we wanted to hit it up, was called Hattie B's. H-A-T-T-I-E, capital B. And Hattie B's is a chicken joint, and it is a spicy chicken joint. And we got a lot of our tour guides talking about it, and we could hear it on the street. And you could pretty well walk into any restaurant in Nashville. You couldn't walk in the Hattie <laughs> There was literally an hour wait in the line. So Hattie B's is famous for the folklore that the wife of the owner originally- A, wife, a little wives tale. A little wives tale. <laughs> Whether it's she, truth or not, we're not sure. <laughs> yeah, she tried to take the old man out with cayenne pepper. She wasn't happy with him. So she, made him chicken one night and she spiced it up heavily with cayenne pepper like made it unedible he ate this chicken and loved it so he decided that he was going to put this on the menu so hattie b's so so they have a they have a southern which is zero heat and then they had a medium and a hot and then they had a busy hot or super hot and then they had shut the cluck up <laughs> C L U C K. So shut the cluck up was the hottest of their their chicken. So I got the hot because I, I I can handle hot. Um, I actually find myself probably on the top one percent of being able to manage hot food. It doesn't agree with my stomach, but I don't care. I just <laughs> eat it anyways. So, Followed it up with tums. So we ate. What I got the hot, and it was good. Like it was very very edible. If you say to them, oh, it's not hot enough, they will say to you, well, why don't you buy a chicken tender for $3 and try it? So we bought a shut the cluck up tender and he brought it over within seconds because I don't think there's many people eating it because I didn't see anybody else there eating it. And the place is packed inside and outside. And uh, my brother-in-law, he had a piece, I had a piece, and then this young lad that we met that was there, he had a piece. So there was three pieces. We cut this tender into three pieces, my brother-in-law, myself, and another gentleman that we met. And he seemed to be a little more accustomed to the heat because he seemed to be a little bit better with it. But, so, <laughs> he downed it like nobody's business. <laughs> yeah, so my brother-in-law and I, we Jake ate got it. the hiccups right away. Oh he my didn't even God. get it down. <laughs> I couldn't even breathe. Which I was going to say, he said the biggest thing was breathing. Breathing. I couldn't <laughs> breathe. It was Because as soon as you took in the, the air and added oxygen to it, it just made it... I really tended. thought I was going to pass out. I really, really thought I was, was going to pass hot. out. It was not hot. Like, I've never had anything in my mouth that hot. Take wow. it. Oh, he's got the hiccups. <laughs> you got the hiccups. Wow. Oh, yeah. Did you get it in? Oh. <laughs> So anyways, that's it for the for the food. You'll it enjoy is, the it, food. Yeah, Nashville is a foodie town. It's if a foodie you're interested, town. They there's have lots the food of different emporium, things. Which is called what is it called? Assembly Hall. The Assembly Hall. Another beautiful day here in Nashville. We are doing the tourist thing, enjoying a ice cream, and going to head into the Gaylord Opry Hotel here and take you for a little look see. We were going to do the tour, but unfortunately, it sold out for the day. So that's kind of an idea if you do kind of want to wing it 
you might want to consider doing these things and booking these things in advance. We could certainly come back tomorrow. It's fine. There's tours for tomorrow. Um, we did go online and look at the the reviews, whether or not it was worth it, and they're mixed. Some people say it is. Some people say it isn't. Um, the show itself is probably more worthy, but those tickets are expensive, so I'm going to turn these around and overlay some music because, as you can hear, and I'm losing my ice cream. <laughs> Let's go take a look. This is the front lobby. Look at that staircase. Oh my gosh. It's majestic. Quite the chandelier. It's beautiful. enjoyed an afternoon here at the resort here, Opryland, Gaylord Opryland Hotel. It's a busy and happening place, that's definitely for sure. What a beautiful spot if you ever get the chance just to walk around, take in a drink, have some lunch, enjoy some music. Beautiful place. I'm so wooed by all the beauty of it. Anyways guys, we're going to head into back to the hotel, have some dinner, get ready for the evening and then head into uh, Broadway for some evening festivities. But well, let's talk about item number five, which is the Parthenon. Just just some hot t hot ticket items of places to visit, museums and things like that. I wanted to touch on is um, you can get overwhelmed with the, the honky tonk town because that's kind of the nightlife. But you can certainly do do daytime stuff there too. But if you're more of a interested, they say that uh, Nashville has become the capital of bridal bridal showers and bridal parties. And there's um, we, we were chuckling that uh, the woo woo girls, the woo woo girls, because that's what they said. That's the, <laughs> that's the sounds they make. Um, but it was a lot of fun in the evenings. But we attended the Parthenon and we attended the Country Music Hall of Fame. Both, we wanted to do the Ryman Theatre, but that wasn't open at the time when we went down. But the Parthenon is a very, uh, it's a replica building of something from Greece. It's beautiful, absolutely worth it. And uh, a live statue, uh, 40 foot? 44 feet. 44 feet of uh, the, the god, Greek goddess Athena. Athena is inside of it. It is really impressive. The goddess of war. The goddess of war. Frank was very fascinated on the history of it. Yeah. And again, the Country Music Hall of Fame. You can't go to Nashville and not visit that place. Yeah. It is just rich with history and definitely worth the visit. Otherwise, it was just a really great trip, guys. And if you ever have the chance to head to Nashville, we highly encourage you to do so because it was a lot of fun. Anyways, guys, thanks so much for tuning in. And, and I think the message in this is just definitely... Take a break. Uh, we, you need to, you yeah, need to reboot. Yeah, exactly. He worked extremely hard through the maple season, syrup season and uh, on our, our day, to, day to day, nine to five jobs as well. Um, but it's also time, you know, before the gardens pick up really busy in the summer. Starting to get to nervous. Just, I saw the grass yesterday and man, is it getting green fast. It's getting green. So I've got to get my, my garden started and, and the, before we know it, we'll be in the peak of summer and yep. busy busyness. So i um, looking forward to just kind of enjoying that season, but also to just taking time to to, to reboot and re and rest. Yeah. So keep until living. next time, stay safe. And keep living. Keep living.